This is the correction to the just concluded 2025 YEG PCE chemistry. If you wrote the exams, you can check to see how well you fared. At the same time, if you didn't write the exams, you can also follow me to learn while preparing for your next exam. Question one, which of the following gases could be prepared in Gibbs apparatus? Gases prepared in Gibbs apparatus are carbon dioxide, sorry, carbon dioxide, and um, hydrogen sulfide. They are basically gases that can be prepared using a solid, a solid salt, and an acid. Carbon dioxide can be prepared using a trial carbonate form. And a dilute acid. The transcar of the four will be the solid, while the dilute acid will be the liquid. It should be a liquid, not solid, sorry. The liquid. So when the the Gibbs apparatus is designed in a way that when the liquid gets in contact with the solid, it produces the gas that is required. So it's meant for an intermittent supply of gases in the laboratory. So the answer to this question here is carbon four oxide, right? Let's move. Question two, the number of principal shells that are present in an atom with electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4 is what? Now we have this. From this electron configuration, we have three shells. Shell number one, is 1s, the principal quantum number one, shell number two, that's 2s and 2p, the principal quantum number two, and shell number three, 3s and 3p, the principal quantum number three. So the answer to this question is C. Question three says the following processes would give evidence of the kinetic theory of matter except now, what does the kinetic theory of matter state? Or what is it all about? It states that matter is made up of very tiny particles which are in constant what, motion, right? That is what the kinetic theory of matter states. So, which of these processes will show that matter is made up of what, tiny particles? Evaporation, yes, gives evidence that matter is made up of tiny particles because when a liquid evaporates, the particles of the liquid, the particles of the liquid will break free will gain sufficient energy and break free from the surface of the liquid and exist as what? Gaseous molecules, right? So that shows that matter is made up of what? Particles. Or it gives that evidence of kinetic theory of matter. Diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, which of course can occur in gases, can occur in a liquid. And uh, in gases, as the particles of the substance migrate from a region of higher concentration, they will be colliding with the particles of the air, which makes the particles of the substance to spread further. So in terms of the gas, the smell of the gas will spread more as the particles of the gas collide with the particles of the air. So that this also confirms the kinetic theory of matter. Also sublimation. In fact, every change of state, every change of state is an evidence of the kinetic theory of matter because matter is made up of tiny particles. And as matter changes from one state to the other, there is what a rearrangement in the particles of matter from solid to liquid, liquid to gas and vice versa. There is always what a rearrangement in the particles of matter. So the major difference between solid, liquid and gas is the way they are what arranged. The particles are arranged in them. While the particles in solid are tightly packed, touching each other. This is solid. The particles in liquid are what? Irregular. They are irregular. The arrangement is what? Irregular. There's no particular uh, form of arrangement. Well, that of gas, they are what? Wide apart from each other. So this all shows what? Any change, any change of state from here to here or here to here confirms the kinetic theory of matter. Repolymerization is the joining together of monomers, small compounds, which are not necessarily particles, to form 
like molecular mass what compounds are we together so polymerization is not a proof of the kinetic theory of matter so the answer is polymerization question four i told that the given mass of a gas occupies 27.3 cm cube at zero degrees celsius what is the volume of the gas at 10 degrees celsius provided the pressure is kept constant since the pressure is kept constant it means the law that will be applied here is the Charles's law which says that the volume of a fixed mass of gas that is proportional to its absolute what temperature which is temperature in kelvin at constant what pressure so this means v1 over t1 equals v2 over t2 and since we are looking for v2 yes so it means Plus that V2 is equal to what? V1, T2, all over T1. But our T must be converted to Kelvin, which is plus 273. 0 plus 273 gives you 273 Kelvin. While this one gives us plus 273, this gives us 283 Kelvin. So if we substitute that here, that will give us 27.3 times V2 is uh, 283 times 283 all over v1 v1 is 273 if we calculate that we get 28.3 please note that whenever you have a question that has to do with gas laws question that has to do with gas law when i say gas laws i'm talking about Gross law Charles's law and co i do gas equation and the rest of them Please always change your temperature to Kelvin, right? Especially when it has to do with Charles's law and ideal gas, ideal gas equation and general gas equation. Always change your temperature to Kelvin. Otherwise, you will not get the correct answer. Question five is sodium chloride would be soluble in A. Sodium chloride. What is sodium chloride? Sodium chloride is an ionic compound made up of what? Sodium ion and chloride ion, right? And being an ionic compound, we are told that the properties of ionic compounds is that they dissolve in what? They are soluble in polar solvent, is it not? Ionic compounds dissolve in polar solvent. Why? Because polar solvents are made up of what? Dipole, like water. Something like water. It's partially negative, partially positive, partially positive. So the positive ion in the ionic compound will interact, we get attracted to the negative pole of the polar solvent. Where the negative ion we get attracted to the um, positive pole of the polar solvent, right? So by so doing, it will be easier to dissolve the ionic compound in the polar solvent. A non-polar solvent does not contain this polarity. So there's no way the ionic compound would dissolve in it. This has nothing to do with it, right? So the answer is A. The carboxyl group in the amino acid molecule has with the amino group of another amino acid to form, okay, amino acid, this is the general formula for amino acid C O O H plus N H three N H two. Sorry, this is an alkyl group. This is H, right? General formula. So if this is to combine to react with another molecule of amino acid, so for these two to react the carboxyl group will lose the OH, that's the hydroxyl group, while the amino group will lose a hydrogen one atom. So, at the end of the day, we get something like this, H2N, C, R, H, C, double bond O, N, H, right? Then C R H 
C, of course, no bond OH. This bond is what we are being asked. The name of that bond is what? The peptide linkage, right? Or the peptide bond. It's not an, an amine linkage. It's not a mean linkage. This is wrong. It's not a double bond. It's not a star group. It's not a star group because this is not an S star bond. If it were to be an S, it would be C double bond O. O. That would be an ester, right? C O O. C O O is ester, but C O N H is what that peptide bond or amide, you can call it amide linkage. Amide linkage. Is that okay? All right, let's move.